Hello, uh, my name is Reed Redden. I'm a sheep and goat specialist for Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. Here today with Reagan Nolan. He's our agronomist. Uh, we both work here at the San Angelo Research and Extension Center. So Reagan, um, I frequently get asked the question, uh, I've got a, a field and I wanna plant a winter cereal crop for my sheep and goats. What do I plant? Wheat, oats, triticale, um, Y'all do a lot of work in this area. Before sure. we get right straight to the answer, you want to tell us a little bit about what you do to help get data and what your team of people do to help get data to help people make the best decision? Yeah, so, so we collaborate with kind of a team of agronomists from around the state, um, really out of a program that's managed by the statewide small grains program in College Station, doing variety testing. We do this for forages, for grains, for kind of a range of different crops and purposes, but the, the real idea here is looking at different varieties of both wheat, oats, barley, triticale, rye, um, and we'll go out and clip those multiple times throughout the year to really see which ones are gonna yield the most at different times, what kind of quality they have um, to provide that information to growers. So that's, that's a big part of our program. Right, and, and there's always not one best thing for everybody. You got region right. specific things, and then what's your goals do? You know, when do you need the forage and you're trying to produce the most or just the best that fit for your environment at certain times of the year. And so I think that's what's important. And so we've got some data here that we're going to show you and Reagan's going to kind of walk you through this. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about this information. So so this is last year's data. For, verdict's still out for, for this year. But um, in 2019, this is data from Miller's View, which is kind of right in the middle of Concho County, just east of us. Um, and we've got, again, multiple varieties of barley, wheat, oats, triticale, and rye. And these are all sorted in order of total yield throughout the year. And so you look kind of to the top and you can see that there were some varieties of barley and triticale that did really well, some rye. Um, but then you look over here at different clippings. And so these are the harvest that we took throughout the year. We started in January and we had another in February and our final harvest was in April. And that was standing biomass, um, you know, once it, the, the crops had headed out. And so if you're interested in total tonnage of what you're gonna get throughout the year, we're looking at these. But if you go to this data and we've got this online for every year, we'll continue to, to kind of keep that updated. You can see um, throughout the season, for example, TAM 114 is a wheat variety that if you were interested in grazing throughout the winter, it had the most tonnage um, if you add up January and February. It didn't have as much at the end in the spring, but it kind of depends on when you're targeting your grazing. Uh, so you could kind of go through this information and pick out some of the differences between varieties. Uh, I'd also highlight really quickly that we have a, a really significant um, range here. So from the top end, we're looking at, at over two and a half tons of forage total on the year. Um, and then down here in the lower range, we're below two tons. And so you've got uh, several hundred pounds per acre dry weight forage that, that is totally due to the genetics and the variety that you select. That's why we think this information is so important for growers to have. Yeah, so where does somebody find this information? So the, the website to go to is variety testing at tamu.edu. Um, and, and you can find our variety trials for all crops um, again there. Or if you just Google Texas A&M, you know, cool season forage varieties or variety testing. It's easy to find um, through search engines as well. But okay. yeah, ah, cool. So this is all about pounds of forage produced. Correct. Uh, but you also have data in here on the crude protein content of right. these different forages. Uh, measures of digestibility, which ones are going to be more or less digestible that they're really going to go to mm -hmm. versus others that they may be a little less, a little more selective of. But we're talking about winter cereals here. I mean, sure. these are primo forage crops. So across the board, bad or the worst is still pretty still pretty good. good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so that's something that statewide we report yield, and that's the only factor that's in a lot of those reports. Yeah. But here regionally, we've been running um, our fiber and protein analyses so that we have that information and we can tell you pound for pound right. which of these are you really getting the most out of. But you're right. I mean, they. We're, we're looking earlier at some of the data, 20 plus percent crude protein um, on this forage throughout the winter is, is really top notch in terms yeah. of the quality that, that we're getting out of them. Very good. Well, I encourage everybody to go to the website, check it out. Uh, if you're in the Concho Valley area and you're looking to come to a field day, 
I believe there's the, the when is the field day for Miller's View? So the Miller's View field day, the, the big wheat tour is the first Thursday in May every year. And so it's going to be May 7th this year in Miller's View, Texas. You get a free fried catfish lunch from catered by Boondocks out of San Angelo. And that's the big draw every year. Um, there's good door prizes. There's usually a minimum of four or five CEU credits offered. And we've got a lot of plots there. So we'll have actual field tour where we walk through plots, look at different varieties, different treatments, and kind of learn about both wheat management for grain, for forage, the dual use system. Um, it's a really comprehensive event. We're also going to have a, a, a similar event near the, the Tom Green Runnels County line near Miles in late April. Details on that are still kind of on their way out. But okay. um, anyway, cool. those, those are the big ones coming up. All right, very good. Well, if y'all got any questions or anything, post them in the comments or uh, you can find our contact information, reach out to us. Take care.